in Luke's uh, gospel, and uh, we, we come to the point that I've already told you about this morning, where our Lord Jesus uh, cleanses uh, the temple. And what we want to look at this morning is uh, how Jesus has concern, as we're going to see a very strong concern, for worship, that that worship be pure. And so uh, we want to see his concern in those days. We want to uh, understand that situation. Uh, we want to understand his concern in our own day, that the worship in our churches be pure, uh, that we worship him in a way that is honoring to him in our personal worship. But uh, we also want to see this um, in closing as a picture of, of what the Lord is doing in our own lives to purify us in order that uh, we might be uh, temples, uh, his temples to offer up spiritual sacrifices. So let me begin by reading Luke chapter 19, verses 45 through 48. And let me just mention too that um, as you read through the Gospels, you'll understand that our Lord Jesus cleansed the temple on more than one occasion. This would be the second cleansing of the temple at his last Passover before he lays down his life for us. This is what we read. Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling, saying to them, it is written, and my house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a robber's den. And he was teaching daily in the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the leading men among the people were trying to destroy him. And they could not find anything that they might do, for all the people were hanging on to every word he said. Now, again, there's several things to look at in this passage. May the Lord uh, help us to benefit from each one of them. Well, we've, uh, we've moved now into the final week of Jesus' humiliation. You know, we think about the work of Jesus in two different aspects. There's the work of humbling himself, uh, where he took on the role of a servant to work out our salvation, um, and there's going to be the time of his exaltation, right? Where after that work is done, he begins step by step to ascend to his throne in glory. Well, this is the last week of that humiliation. At the end of this week, he will lay down his life to rescue us from the consequences of our guilt. We see Jesus moving towards the cross. Now, two weeks ago, we saw him fulfill the promise that God had made to David that he would raise up one of his sons as king and establish his kingdom forever. Uh, we see this as Jesus presents himself to Israel. Uh, from the disciples' perspective, this was a time to celebrate. Uh, God had finally sent his king, and they were glorifying God, and they were blessing this Messiah. But we also saw that Jesus was looking at uh, these events in, from a slightly different perspective. Uh, when he rode on the donkey and his, he was approaching Jerusalem and he saw the city, that he began to weep. Now, he began to do this not because of the pain that he was about to go through on the cross when he would bear God's wrath against our sins, but he was weeping because of what was going to happen to his people, to Israel. Remember, the Jews were going to reject him. Now, not all of them. There was always a remnant according to God's gracious choice, and that's sovereignly in his hands. Jesus knew there were people that belonged to him, but he was weeping because the majority of the leaders and the people were going to reject him. And in doing this, they were going to reject, of course, the only way that God has given that they or anyone might have peace with God. Remember, we all come into the world at war with God. That's true of Israel. That's true of us today as well. And the only way that that warfare can end is by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Having trusted in Him, we have peace with God. Remember what Jesus says in John 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. We understand that in terms of salvation, but the same thing is true with regard to peace because that salvation means that we put down the weapons of our warfare and God stops fighting against us, so to speak. Yes, he does love us. He does show us a great deal of benevolence, but we are still at war. But there is peace through the Lord Jesus Christ. They were going to reject that peace by rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that, the Father was going to hide his truth from them. 
As a matter of fact, he was already doing this as Jesus entered into Jerusalem. While the disciples were rejoicing, the Pharisees were planning to kill him. And it wasn't long before the people who uh, apparently were uh, celebrating his entry into Jerusalem would be crying out for his death. Now, we know that was a part of God's plan, that Jesus would be put to death. He had to go to the cross. But we also understand this is the result of God's judicial hardening of Israel. When we reject God's truth, God withdraws his Holy Spirit. And when he withdraws the Spirit, the heart becomes harder and more resistant to the truth, which is why we need to be careful that we don't uh, resist God's truth, that we don't reject any part of it, but we embrace all of it because that's what the Spirit of God is leaving us to do. And when we don't do that, we grieve and quench him and he withdraws. Thankfully, he won't withdraw uh, completely and he won't withdraw forever if we belong to him. Um, what I'm talking about here is what he does in the lives of unbelievers, but we still need to be careful that we honor what the Lord says. So Jesus wept over Jerusalem because of that rejection, because of what that meant for them, and finally because of the ultimate consequence that was going to fall upon them. In his judgment,